In this video, we're gonna use all-in-one SEO to try to optimize our website. Uh, I said try because I'm very disappointed. Log into your WordPress website. If you're still logging in using WP Admin, no. mm, nope. no. it's not a very safe way, so please watch my tutorial about securing your WordPress website. That's what I call security. Then on the dashboard, we go to plugins, add new. We type in all-in-one SEO, press install now, and of course, activate it. And then we are at the all-in-one SEO setup wizard. So click on let's get started. And then we have to choose what kind of website do we have. Do we have a blog or maybe a WooCommerce website or just a portfolio or a small offline business? If you don't have anything that fits into this category, just select other and just type it in here. For example, a circus. But then it will be a small offline business, right? We just go with the small offline business. Then the next thing we do is we scroll down. We're going to create our homepage title. Let me quickly explain to you what a title and a meta description is because we're going to fill them in right there. If you're looking at the search engine result page, the SERP as we call it, then we can see here that this is the title over there and this is the meta description. And this little thing is called a Vavicon. Now we're going to change this for your website. Now your homepage title is always different from your landing pages and your sub pages on your website because this is about your brand. We're going to optimize this website, which is called Orange Fit. I've created it in a YouTube tutorial if you want to know how. So in this case, our homepage title should be the name of your brand, like Orange Fit, and then a separator. You can use anything like a dash or a, I, I like the pipe. And then you're going to type in what you do, plant-based health, lifestyle products, something like this. Then we scroll down and we have the homepage meta description. This is why I actually prefer rank math over all in one SEO if you have Divi because it integrates way better than all in one SEO. But let's remove all this gibberish and then we're going to add the homepage meta description. What I actually miss in here is how many words I can place in here because this is just do whatever you want. It's not supposed to work this way. Let's add in the homepage meta description over there. Now you can't actually see how much you can fill in here, but there is a limit. So just fill in something like this, two sentences. And then we're going to press save and continue. Then step two, are you a person or organization? In my case, an organization. And then the name is like this. We're going to add in a phone number from your country. And we're going to add in a phone number it is all about customer support. So we're going to choose that one. Then we're going to choose in our logo, upload it or select it in your media library. And we have a logo right here. So we're going to cl click on choose image. Make sure the minimum size is 112 by 112. And what we have over here is a default social share image. For example, when I send a message to WhatsApp to my friend, I say, hey, check out this holiday. And then you see this image over here. Now, this is a social share image, specially created to when you share it with someone else, you're like, hey, what's that? I'm going to click on it. So it improves your click through rate. It's like a YouTube thumbnail. So we're going to upload a new image for this. These actually have a lot of more minimum sizes than this. So I don't know why this is 112 by 112. We're just going to use one of these products as this is a product website. So that's OK. Then we have the social profiles. Just fill all of them in. And then we press on save and continue. Then on step three, select your features. When you keep this one enabled, the analytics, you will get Monster Insights analytic plugin on your website. As I personally don't like it very much, I'm not going to install it over here. If you want to dive into your analytics, just go to your Google Analytics or install the analytics plugin from analytics itself. I have noticed sometimes that it doesn't work well with different kind of plugins and themes and theme builders. But if you want to just keep it enabled, I'm not going to do this for this website. Then this one is also an extra plugin called Optin Monster, and it actually helps you to place pop ups with email marketing and all this kind of stuff. Personally, I don't like it either, so I'm not going to install this on your website. You can always install it later. This is one of the main problems I have with all-in-one SEO, that all this junk comes with it, so you have to deselect it. And I, I just don't like that. Then we have image SEO. This is only for pro and also the local SEO and video side, web news, smart redirection, 
Link Assist, Index Now, and REST API are all for Pro. So, because these are all features that you have to pay for extra. Now, if you want to see a tutorial about the paid version, drop it down in the comments and maybe I will buy it and show you how that works. Then we scroll down and we press save and continue. So the only things we have enabled are these two. Then you can choose if your website is under construction or it's a live site. If it is a live site, then they're gonna enable the sitemap and send it to Google. If you're under construction, then it won't create a sitemap and it won't send it straight to uh, the search engines. So that's actually a pretty good feature. I would go with a live site for this website. Then we need to switch this button and then you can look for what do you want to have inside of your sitemap and be indexed. Do you want to have your posts? Well, if you don't have a blog, then you should disable this one. Pages, I think you have pages, so keep this enabled. The attachment, well, you can add it to your sitemap, but over here there is a redirect attachment pages button. So yes, we're gonna enable this one. We're also gonna enable this one, so it's all good. The next question is, do you have multiple authors? If you're the only one on your website creating blogs and pages, then select no, because WordPress create different kind of author pages, which are completely not relevant for the entire internet, unless you are a news blog or creating a lot of posts and then people can read about you. In our case, we don't have multiple authors and I want the attachment page to be redirected. Save and continue. If you want to be subscribed to their newsletter, fill in your email address over there. And if you don't, well, just don't count me in, remove it and press save and continue. We are using the light version, no license needed, enjoy. Thank you very much, skip this step. Well done, our website is now SEO ready. As they say it, we still have to tweak a lot of things. So we're gonna press finish setup and go to the dashboard. Here we are at the all-in-one SEO dashboard. Well, let's first close all these commercials over here, this one and this one. And we also have one message and let me guess. Oh wow, it's about the pro version. I'm gonna dismiss this and close it. On the dashboard, we can see all your pages in here and what is the score of your pages, but also the products. We have five products without a focus key phrase and pages. We're gonna walk through the optimization of a page in just a minute so you know actually what to do. If you scroll down over here at the quick links, we can see all kind of features. We're gonna walk you through all these settings over here on the left side. In here, you can put in a license or launch setup wizard. Let's go into the next step, the webmaster tools. Here you can verificate your webmaster tools with all-in-one SEO. However, I usually don't depend on a plugin to do this for me. What I do is put it in straight into my theme or straight into WordPress, straight on my server with some files. I never do this using this way. But if you want to do it, you can click on this one and then you can put in your verification code there. But then when you switch SEO plugins, your verification is being undone. So I usually do this straight with Google Search Console onto my web server. Let's go to breadcrumbs over there. You can enable your breadcrumbs, which is actually pretty useful. They are essential to SEO. If you want to do this, you can use Gutenberg block if your theme supports this, or you can use a widget PHP code, but the most used case is just a short code. Just copy this one. I actually want it in here, so I'm going to enable the visual builder because I'm using in Divi. I'm gonna add in a text module, and the content is gonna be the short code. And this is now how it looks. We have home, products, proteins, and then this protein, because these are categories. Here we can go to the settings. Now, we have the preview of how it looks over here. Then we have the separator. The separator is this little icon over here. And if you want to change it, you can use anything you want. Then you can add in your homepage link on or off. If you turn it off, mm, I would not advise to do so. So keep it on. And you can change the label if you want to do that. For example, to start. Then you can add a prefix. For example, you are here and then like this. If you have an archive for your blocks, for example, then it always looks so hideous like archives for and then the post type name. You can also change this to, for example, all posts about or maybe everything about and then you type. Also with the search result format, we're still talking about breadcrumbs. So also in the search result, you can change this and the 404 error format uh, breadcrumbs. And then we have the current item. If you want to show it, then it's this, the article title. 
but you can also add a link to it. That would be, I would not advise you to do so because it would, it's just confusing for people. And breadcrumb templates, which is for the pro version. Let's press on save changes. Then we scroll all the way up and we go to RSS content. If you have a blog with a lot of news and some people you still use RSS readers or other websites just put in your excerpts from your post inside of their site link to you. You can add in text or text or anything before each post on your site feed. In here you can also edit after each post. For example, uh, the post blah 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 first appeared on and then the link to your website. Could be very useful if you have a lot of news or else just leave it as it is. And then we go to the access control over there. It's a pro feature in here. You can give more people, not only administrators, access to the all in one SEO settings and control and anything. They also can create new roles for you like the SEO manager and the SEO editor. It's useful if you have a big website with a lot of news, a lot of editors and all kind of people. Let's go to advanced. And then we have a couple of advanced settings and then we have post type and then a lot of pro stuff that we can't use. And you have announcements for plugin announcements and update details. I actually don't want to see them because there are a lot of them and they're just nagging me all the time and I don't actually want to see that. Then you can enable automatic updates. If you don't visit your website a lot and you don't update regularly, this is highly recommended or else you might fall into a problem that you might get hacked. Especially when you realize that the all-in-one SEO WordPress plugin have were vulnerable to cross-site scripting attacks. And that was not years ago, that was actually three months ago. Then we have users tracking. I don't want them to track my users, so I'm gonna disable this. Then we have an open IA API key for the pro version. And then the last option here, you can uninstall all-in-one SEO and it will remove everything from your database. If you want to start fresh, then you have to check this and delete your plugin. It will delete everything from your database. But if you're going to migrate to another plugin like Joe's to rank math, then you don't want to use this because they can actually import all this data into their plugins. And then you can delete the plugin with everything from out rank math or Joe's SEO. So leave this unchecked just to be sure and press save changes. All right, well done. We have talked about all these things. So let's go to search appearance over here. Here we can change another couple of interesting things. For example, we now have a title separator. You can choose whatever you want on your posts. It is this little thing over there. I already told you I like the pipe, so I'm gonna use this one. If you want other ones, just press show more. Then you can add in even more or create your custom. And then you can create any separator that you want. For example, if you want to add in like this, then that's all possible. But we're gonna keep it with the pipe. Let's scroll down and we have the homepage. And there they say if you're using setting homepage, then we can edit the homepage settings directly to change title and description inside of your homepage. We're gonna do that later on. A knowledge graph is actually some information Google shows to visitors when they search on your brand name, for example. If you search for Facebook on Google, this is what I mean. This entire thing on the right side. Let's use our website name for this website. And if you have an acronym or a shorter version, maybe you have an acronym like Orange Fit Inc. or I don't know, whatever you have, you can fill it in or just leave it blank. Person organization, we already filled it in. This customer support, everything. Well, that's great. And then you have your logo, you can change it over here. Local SEO is for pro, it's for pro versions only. Save changes and then we go all the way up and we go to the content types. Here you can change all the content types of your website. It's all these standard information. You can always change these settings per post or per page. However, you have to turn this on, of course, if you have posts, then you can change all these things like post titles and meta descriptions per post. So don't worry, you can always change it, but this is just the standard layout. You can change your standard title template. In our case, you have the title of your post, your separator, and then the title of your website. You can also click on this one, and then you can add in, for example, author names or categories, titles, date, days, month. Well, a lot of things that could be useful if you're running a big blog, for example. The meta description is standard is your post excerpt, which is great, but, but in real life, you're always gonna change this to a custom made meta description, but that's okay. Let's go to schema markup over there, only available for pro users. That's too bad. Let's go to custom, also for the pro users. 
Oh, we can go to advanced. Then we have the robot meta settings. If you turn this off, then you can choose for all posts to go no image index, no snippet or no archive or no follow or even no index, but that's not logical. So let's unclick these all. So what you actually want to do is use default settings on your standard website. Then we have other options, just show your meta box. All right, then we have talked about all the posts. So we're gonna close this one and then we go to our pages. And this is actually exactly the same as all the posts again. Then we go over there to projects. Do you have project? Yes, I don't have them. So I'm gonna add in no, and all these things are exactly the same again. Also with products, you have them, yes, no, everything is the same. Then we click on save changes. And then we go to taxonomies. On this page, you can tweak and tune all the same things, but now for categories and for example, tags. So you can see all your taxonomies over here. Just change it the way you want. However, there's one thing different. If you go to advanced over here, you can actually remove the category base prefix, but that is a pro feature. Now, I think they made a mistake with this because this would be the one reason for me to switch to rank math right now because the category based prefix most of the times I remove them from my websites I'm starting to not get very happy with all-in-one SEO all right I'm a bit disappointed but we go to image SEO over there so we can choose three different options in here if you disable them then you would go to a page an attachment page so if you want to see how that looks just click on an image uploaded through your website and you can see over here you can go to view attachment page, click on this, and then you are being sent to an actual page with your image inside it like this. This will pollute the search engines extremely. They actually have no value at all for your website. What we can do, we can redirect them to the attachment itself. Then it will be redirected to the image. Let me show you how that works. If I save this setting now and I refresh this page, we will not go to this page, but, but now we have the entire image just as an image, if you can see it over here. And then you have the attachment parent. If you link over here, then it will, I will not recommend it, but then you can go to the page that you have uploaded the image to, but then the search engines will not index your images. So I would say attachment, but choose in your case what to do. Then we have image SEO is only for pro users. Also a bit disappointing. Let's go to archives and then you have the archives of your author. If you're working with a lot of authors, keep this to yes. Then you can change all these settings for your name, your title and your biography, the standard things. Then I would definitely tune this a little bit for the author title, the author name and then the separator working with and then your site title, for example, in my case, orange fit for this website. For example, then you have the author name, separator, and then the professional sharing knowledge with orange fit. I don't know, something that you want. I don't have different kind of authors, so I'm going to press no on this one. And then we close this, and then we go to date archives. If you have a lot of blogs, then this could be useful. In my case, we don't, so I'm gonna press on no. Close this one. Then you have your search page. Normally, you don't index your search pages as they don't have a lot of content. So we just leave it on no. Then we go to project archives. If you do have projects, you also have archive pages. If you don't have projects at all, just press no. If, only, if you only have one of three or four projects, then also choose no. But if you do have them a lot, then you can enable it. Press save changes. And then we go to the last one, advanced. You want to enable default settings on global robots meta. If you don't click on this, you can change all the robots meta. However, if you change this to no index, your entire website will never be shown in Google. So don't do that. No follow is always also a big no go because it won't follow any links on your website. And then your website is just a dead end on the internet and nobody likes a dead end. So we're going to just use default settings for all the website. Then we have the site links search box. Well, if you have a big website, this could be useful, but if you have a small website, Google's not going to implement a search box like this on your small website. It will definitely not. Only if you have a lot of content and a lot of visitors. So Google actually thinks it is worth implementing it in the search results. So you can turn this on, but I highly doubt that this will do anything but 
In my case, I'm just gonna turn it off. No pagination for canonical URLs. Keep this on and it, if I'm gonna explain this, I'm just gonna bore you and you're gonna skip this part. So just keep this on and it's just not interesting at all. Use meta keywords, no, because Google doesn't work with meta keywords for years now. So just keep it on, no. Then you can run short codes uh, for the uh, generating the data title meta description. I would turn this off. Then you have page format and this is all great. Just leave, leave it like this. If you enable this feature, you can remove query arguments. If you're a developer, you know exactly what you're doing. So you can tweak and tune this. Actually, you can disable your entire SSS feed. You can do that, but it's not recommended. So just keep it enabled. And then you have all these kind of feeds you can disable. Well, just leave it the way it is because it's not logical to change anything in here except you know what you're doing and you're an expert then you can do this of course press save changes and then we go to the next settings and then we have talked about all these things so we go to over here the social networks well it's obviously your social networks so just fill them all in over there then from here we can go to facebook twitter and pinterest and in here you can change the open graph meta markup then you can go to the default post image source that would be the default image or just go to the featured image of your post or page itself that would have my recommendation but you can also keep it on the default image or change it to the first image and content just look what's best for you i would say the default image and when you have a default image is over here finally some more examples that the ideal ratio is actually this one uh, for example, these pictures or these for Tina screens. So now you know how you can create a social share image and upload it to your website with the right format. And then we go to Twitter, which is actually kind of the same, but then they're working with a card. Then we go to Pinterest and you can enter your verification code in here again, just do the straight your theme or WordPress. Let's go on the left side to sitemaps right there. In the sitemaps, I think we've already configured it, but so your sitemap can be found in here, which is the URL of your website slash sitemap.xml. Here you can find a page sitemap, a product sitemap, and a product category sitemap. And Google can just scroll into here and check out the sitemap, go into your pages. Great. Just leave it the way it is. And yes, you do not want to disable this one, so keep it enabled. Then if you scroll down again, you have the sitemap settings. We've already talked about all these things, so these are great, just leave them the way it is. And here you can add in some additional pages outside of the WordPress environment. So that is, can be useful in some cases. And then we also have the advanced settings. You can, you can exclude some posts or pages that you don't want to have inside of your sitemap. However, they can still be indexed if someone links to the page. So you just have to put one page or one post on no index. That's actually the best way to do this. So I don't exactly know why it is in here, but all right. And then we scroll all the way up and we have video sitemaps only for pro again. And you can add in a HTML sitemap to your website. Most people don't do this just so just disable it. If you have a very big website with a lot of content and new content, it might be useful for your visitors, but I have not seen it in action so many times. So then you can also have an RSS sitemap. If you're a news website, this is very important. If you don't, you can actually turn it off as you already have a normal sitemap on your website. Press save changes, and then we go to a link assistant over there. All right, just for pro users, again, I, let's go to redirects. Redirecting tool is only available for licensed users. Redirects is actually a pretty important part of SEO because if you change a page to another URL, this happens all the time because you might want to change the title or anything. Then you have to redirect your old page to the new page for search engines. It's very important. Why to make this for pro users only. I don't get it. Now I have to install another plugin to do this for me. I'm starting to get really disappointed with all-in-one SEO because this is actually a free feature in the Rank Math SEO plugin. This really starts to annoy me. Let's go to local SEO then. Are you kidding me? So this is only available for licensed users. I don't get it. If you have multiple locations, I get it. But if you have just one local business, uh, I'm a bit puzzled. Also, when I have just one store, 
Oh, wow. All right, if you have a local business, stop now with this tutorial and check out this tutorial about RankMath SEO because all these things are actually free in that SEO plugin. That's why I like it way more than all-in-one SEO. Well, let's go to SEO analysis over there. If you want to see your competitors, you probably have to pay for it. So we're not going to dive in that right now. Let's go on the left side to search statistics over there. Never mind. We're going to tools over there. Then we have the robots.txt editor. And if you click on this one, it is just like this and it should be like this. Very easy. Where's your sitemap? They cannot go to WP admin and they can go to there. If you want to make it custom, you can just check this box and you can change this and add some rules and I don't know, whatever you want. But on most websites, just keep this off. Then it works excellent out of the box. You can edit your HD access. I never do this using a plugin. I always do this via FTP. Import export here. You can import all your settings and export them to another website. If you are deploying a lot of websites at one time, could be useful. Let's go to database tools. Here we can reset and restore settings in our database. So you just click on all these things and click on reset selected settings to default and then it just resets them. I don't know why you want this, but it's possible. Just go to system status. You get all the information you want into your into a system file or just copy this entire thing to your clipboard or just email it. It can be useful to send it out to some developers with all in one SEO if they ask for it. Very interesting if you bump into troubles and you want to debug them or anything. Let's go to code snippets. Now it's asking to install another plugin. When you press this button, they install WP code light. It's just been installed inside of your WordPress installation. With this, you can disable auto-generate shipping details, disable SEO previews, disable shortcode, limit meta description to 160 characters. Isn't this a limit SEO title to 60 characters? Wait, you're actually telling me that the meta descriptions and the titles can be longer and you don't get a message about that? No, that can be right. Let me see. This is my title. This is going to be way longer than 160 characters. My goodness, I can just save this title? Oh, this is bad. I knew only one SEO was bad, but this bad? Never going to be indexed this way. It is so going to try it on the back end. So when I change it in here, you can see how this works. 68 out of 60 max recommend characters still doesn't work this way anymore. I'm going to show you why. Look at the width of this title. When I change in this one, all eyes, then I went 60 and it's this wide. But when I go with 60 W's, look at this. It's almost double the size. Search engine don't work with characters anymore. They work with pixels, the width of each character. <sighs> I don't know if I want to continue this tutorial because it's just a bad plugin. I really advise you not to use all-in-one SEO. Just go with rank map because this is just, sorry, I cannot, I cannot finish this tutorial because it's just, why are they working with this? Why is this even a plugin? Why is this? I'm sorry guys to waste your time, but all-in-one SEO is just really bad. Just go to this video, install RankMath SEO, and you're all set to actually dominate the search engines because I would never advise somebody to use this plugin. Sorry, if you do want to see useful content, subscribe over there and of course go to this video. It'll help you way better. I still wish you an awesome day and go get those search engine rankings because you actually can with the great plugin.